Well, Fred, here we are back at the desk. Yeah, the first <laughs> round of the CIF football playoffs. Uh, the first 10 weeks, or we should say the 11 weeks of the football season. Yeah, it really we happened. Have, and, and you count the zero week. And if you count the, the practice weeks, you, yeah. know, the three, you know, the two to three weeks you have for camp, that's yeah. 14 weeks of practice. Yeah. Not that I've ever been rehearsed right. on, on this type yeah. of line before at a certain university, but you know, it's been a lot of football. Yeah. And the high school football season can be very long if you have a team that stretches it out and goes deep because you've got these next four weeks, yep. James, and yes, then sir. possible state playoffs, which could be an additional two games. They're gonna, they're gonna, there's going to be another six weeks of high school football, and it starts this Friday. All the playoff teams, are, they're, they're vying these next two weeks uh, to get to Thanksgiving because that's really what it's all about. To practice that Thanksgiving week and, and, and get to a semifinals, but it and, starts here. And you people night. want to know why three sport athletes are in decline? Yeah, because these seasons are longer, 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 longer and long. I mean, yeah. if if you play yeah. your cards right, yeah. So this, these, this finishes you know, just a couple uh, two weeks before Christmas. That's yeah. when it's all. And, 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 and by that time, you know, basketball's already started. And, yeah. you know, but but for all of them, what they're playing for is a CIF championship. And actually, this begins. In our area, Thursday night yes, games, sir. we can go over those two games. Yes, sir. We've got La Pointe in the Miramonte League going against Nogales, the Montview League champion. Um, and, and I'm going to be there on Friday night. I'm glad that they moved this game to Thursday. Awesome. Uh, because I saw them last week. And, you know, I went to Nogales last year. They love you. It's a, you know, well, it's, it's a great, they love their team. Yes. They love their school. Yeah, I agree. And it's a great place to watch a high school football game. And, you know, La, La Pointe. Um, is not a rollover. No, they're not. They, I, they've had a pretty decent year. I know they lost lost big to Pomona in league, and they wound up finishing second. But they've made some some big strides. They're doing what Nogales is trying to do, in James. And I think it could be a, a better than expected game on Friday on Thursday night. La Puente is as as Eric has mentioned. They're not a really a bad team. I went to see them play Gladstone earlier on this year. They have a, a couple players are going to give Nogales some fits. Having said that. I also think Nogales' road to the finals, if they play, they do their cards right, we'll be seeing them on championship weekend, Fred. I think they're, the, well, in, that, in, that, yeah. in those eight teams you look in that uh, bottom side of the bracket, I don't see anybody that can beat them. Yeah, well, you know, it gets tough as you move on. You know, no, I don't know, Gallus, let's be honest, they're, they're not a world beater yet. But what they do pl do well is play defense. They swarm after you and they get after you. Awesome. And they do a, little, a lot of misdirection stuff on offense. Which for teams that aren't used to that sort of things, uh, a la San Dimas, it can get confusing. And, and they've got Andrew Carrasco who can run the ball. They, they've got a quarterback who can throw it. But I love the way their defense is playing. And when you look at what they did in the Montview, they had only allowed an average of three points per game, 13 points in four games, sure. and then held uh, Azusa, a high scoring team, to 10 points. So yeah, I do like Nogales to win this game, to move on to the uh, quarterfinals the next week. And we've got another game. South Hills, and, and, and uh, you've talked to them this week. They're, they're going against a 2-18 and 18 on Thursday night, James. What are your thoughts there? Well, it's interesting because this was a team that got in that literally on the 11th hour, which is a Pacifica from Oxnard. This was the team that got in due to the fact that Oxnard, who was the league champion, had to vacate their wins due to uh, the use of an ineligible player. Um, and an interesting thought on why uh, Matt just short, uh, back to the side to play on Thursday night, Veterans Day is on Friday, yeah, and so he didn't want to have a whole day with these kids being by themselves at their home, and, you know, possibly getting themselves into you know some kind of trouble. This is true. There's no school Friday. There's no school Friday. So <laughs> his thought was, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to lose a routine of game day on a non-school day. Yeah, and so he has an advantage. He's, he's played a couple times on Thursday, so he knows the kids know the, the routine right. play on a Thursday night. Yeah. Quite interesting. And that can help the home crowds, too, when you're, you know, it's always easier when there's school that day for the students to show up that night. Uh, with no school on Friday for Nogales and South Hills, you can be up all night watching the game. You don't, you don't have to worry about school the next day. Smart. I'm surprised more teams aren't playing on Thursday night. Um, and the winner of this game, James, is going to get tested or Burbank, two 8-2 and two teams. So for South Hills, you've you, you got to win, and then you got to scout on Friday and, and, and see if they can, they can make a run here. And two teams who run the ball. Tustin runs the ball. Yeah. Burbank, they want to physically pound you and play some, some ground and pound football. So it's a good matchup for South yeah. Hills. And again, I think their path to the semifinals is pretty good. Fred, I don't think there's a team that's traveling any farther on Friday than Damien. Damien, yeah. They're going to Paso Robles. Damien gets in in Division Four as an at-large team that they easily got in due to the fact that they had a, a record of 500. Um, kind of like the chances here, Fred. Do you, they, you know, the, the, the problem know, with... Uh, the problem with the playoffs now, James, is when we used to do this 
two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, all the playoffs, they, they, they did it on geography, yep. you know, uh, what they called, you know, the proximity. Yes. Um, and it was a lot easier to kind of know what they're up against. Know what, you know, this team, possibly, this is going to be a four-hour drive. They're leaving at 9.30 in the morning on Friday. Yeah, so okay, I mean, so that's that should tell you right then and there, you know, what, you know which, and they're treating it, and one of their assistants uh, texted me this uh, this morning and said, we're treating it as a business trip, and it's true. Yeah. And I, the one thing that I, what helps Danny and out, we talked about this the last couple weeks, strength of schedule. Yeah. I don't think Paso Robles is nearly as athletic as Rancho no, no. or Upland. No. Or Etiwanda or Los Osos. Yeah, and, that, and that's and, and that's you know there's there's benefits to playing in the baseline league and there's drawbacks to playing in the baseline. Mm -hmm. This is one of the benefits. The drawbacks is it's hard to qualify for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, the benefits are once you get there, you know you're not going to face any team like Rancho Cucamonga or Upland or, or maybe even some of those other teams in your league. Uh, Paso Robles has lost four games, so who knows? But we do know this. If Damien gets by this, Capistrano Valley is probably way in the wings. And guess what happens? And and guess, yeah, guess what happens? That game will be at the pit. That game will be at the pit. So and, I think things are going to set up well. Um, hey, Damien, it's either going to be an incredible bus ride home or it's going to be an awful ride home. But uh, we'll see what happens. Another team that's in tough that's playing at Citrus College on Friday is Glendora in Division uh, also 4. Division four. They are playing Corona Santiago. Corona Santiago has been seated all, uh, has been ranked all season. The three losses they've had are were to Norco, Centennial, and Citrus Hill. Yeah. Those are three teams that kind of jump out of the page. Yeah. This is not an easy assignment. Well, and, for the and this is Big Eight football. And Big Eight football is a little bit better than I think the, the Palomar League. Yeah. And you know, you look down there in that that deep inland Empire area in mm -hmm. Corona, where Centennial lies, where Redlands East Valley lies, where a lot of the these teams are. It's good football. You know, the, the demographics are made for football out there. Um, it seems like teams in that area always go on deep runs. Um, make no mistake about it. This is a tough, tough opener for yeah. Glendora. No um, about I don't, you know, I don't know how Cal Preps is projecting this out, um, but I would, I would imagine that Glendora is going into this game. James is the underdog. No question, no question about it. We'll answer that question in a minute here about who's favorite, yeah. who's not. Another game which I thought was kind of interesting. Great, you go to Division Eight. Northview is playing Milliken. Yeah, and they're playing on the road at Mel at at Milligan High School, or right, this game might be at the Vet. By the way, we'll, we'll check, we'll, uh, double check, and get you a site. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll tweet that out this afternoon. Long Beach Milligan, and that's what we. Uh, they're second place team from the uh, Moore League. Well, 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 let, well, let me look at. You look at the Moore League. Uh, the league champion is always going to be Long Beach. Yes. What have they won? Fifty in a row. It, it, it might be. So the way I look at it, you know, I take away Long Beach Poly because that's a Division One school, and I look at the morning as something separate with Long Beach Wilson and those other teams. So I, I call them the, the the league champion by default because the real league champion um, is in a different class all by itself. Um, I don't know, James. This this I don't know if uh, this is going to be a tough haul for Northview because what you see from that area normally are a bunch of athletes. Yes. And, I, you know, they, they, they've got to be more than just all Stephen Comstock on offense. He can't, be, he can't be your leading rusher, your leading passer, your all everything. Because I, I think what we saw towards the end of the year when you watch them lose to San Dimas is when you key on him specifically, you, you contain him you contain their offense. I agree. And I think Northview, um, in a playoff game, when a team like the like Millikan's had a bunch of film, uh, you've got to be a little bit more creative going into this game on Friday to get by it. So Cal Preps has this game, uh, Millikan winning by six over Northview. That yeah. tells you that this yeah. game is going to be as competitive as can be. Yeah. And the winner will most likely get, get Grace Brethren, a team that is hungry for a championship. Yeah. They they haven't, they, uh, if you remember, you go back in due time frame, you go back two years ago, Great Brethren made the finals, but was forced to forfeit all their games the day before the championship game for using an eligible yeah. player. So they are really hungry to get back to the championship yeah. game. So the road for, <coughs> for the Vikings are interesting. By the way, uh, Lindor is a two touchdown underdog. Two touchdown underdog. Yeah, no, I, I knew that was a tough road. Now we also got in this in, in uh, this division eight. We got San Dimas at home against Kaiser, another team from Fontana, right? Is that where Kaiser's yep. from? Yes, sir. Um, seven and three, two seven and three teams. I'll tell you this though. 
I really like how San Dimas was playing towards the end of the year. The, the, I like that running back, don't you? I, I really do. And, and, and the win over over Northview, Northview to, to claim a three-way title, I think they found their mojo back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they wound up finishing lead with a, a blowout over Baldwin Park, which everyone expected. Um, San Dimas has been in championship games, but this is a different type of playoff division. When they won it, and we mentioned this on Sunday when we were mm -hmm. going to the parents, mm -hmm. when they've won championships in the past, it has been in divisions where these first two rounds the Mid -Valley were, Division. were walkovers. The and Valley that, Division. Yeah, there's, the because of that success, there are no more walkovers. They're not playing in Division 12 or 13. And, you know, Glendora played Kaiser earlier in the year and was able to pull away from Kaiser, right? I, I think later in that game to post a victory. Um, San Dimas is not Glendora. Um, I think this is a toss-up here. I, I, I think because they're at home, they've got a legitimate shot because of the way they play. Uh, but I really do think this is this is one of those 50-50 games. We'll see what happens. Two seven three teams. We're a little biased at Division Eleven folks, just because it's our area. And there's a, a, the, some of the top seeds in the area, uh, in the division are in our area, and so when you look at it, first off, Covina has Victor Valley. The good thing for for Covina is their district field, so they don't have to take the ride, the two hour ride up to yeah. Victor Valley to play. Um, you really like these guys, don't you? I do. I really like Covina. I like the way. You know, there are two sophomores, Nin Burns and God, his name escapes me. They're, they're, they're running back. He's been he's been nails the whole year. They have really gotten better as the the season went on. You know, they they lost that game to Northview because it got away from them early, and they started to make their comeback. They were able to to beat San Dimas and hold on till the end. And I just think that you know that this is a this is a division, James, um, where they have a chance to to go deep now. The best team in this division is Culver City. I think they're on every level. They're the number one seed. Mm -hmm. But Kavina being the fourth seed, I do like their chance against a 5-5 a five and five team in the first round. And then you look what awaits them after that, possibly Westminster or St. Genevieve, two teams with seven wins. Yep. But I, I do think Kavina, this late in the year, um, when you have Nin Burns, who's, who's become a, more of a runner than a passer, which works in high school football when you're athletic like he is. It opens up your passing game. Um, I think they've got a really good shot, and and then you're looking at the bottom half of this bracket where you've got Arroyo, the division defending Division 12 champion now, as the number two seed in Division 11. They haven't lost a game this this uh, year. They're taking on Lake Elsinore Lakeside, a seven and three team who finished in a four way tie for first. Again, we talked about this on Sunday. Uh, you talked to Coach Jim Singheiser this week. What do you think of this matchup? It's there's a there's some several red flags here. Yeah. First off, they run the ball. You say they run the ball quite a bit. They have a running back who Jim says runs angry. Yeah, and so that's that's the first concern that he has is we they got to they got to stop the run. If they stop the run, he, you know the, I like our I like our chances. They come from a league in which the the teams above them are in division five and six. Yeah, so they you could tell okay, so they got a little bit of strength of schedule on their side. From their royal perspective, there's a couple of things here, Fred. First off, they didn't play last week. Yeah, they had a bye week. That's right. And so, and really on Friday night, they, could, they couldn't. <laughs> you could say they've had a bye in the Mission Valley League, with the exception of South Alabama. That's point number two we're going to mention here. <laughs> but the first thing was that he could, you know, Friday night he's so used to scouting somebody. Yeah. You know, in this division where you have teams from as you know, you go up north to yeah down south, you don't know who you're going to get. Yeah. So you know that Friday night was kind of wasted, so to speak. And as you mentioned, the last tough game they had was against South Amman. Yeah. That's, to me, it seems like... It was a lifetime ago. Exactly. It was a lifetime so, ago. there are some major issues here going with the Royal. And if you think that they're going to have their path to the finals, is going to be unencumbered. They're probably going to play Rancho Mirage next week, who they played in the finals last well, year. Like, and, and remember, players have memories. Yeah. For, and I think for... That, they're looming in the second round yeah. of Rancho Mirage, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, if you think about it, I think this game is important because this is the game that sets them in motion. If they if they handle this and they go and they win it big, okay, now you're in the playoffs. Now you've got a, a big competitive game under your belt, and you can attack the rest of the playoffs. Um, it, it, but it's also one of those games, for the reason you just mentioned, James, where there could be a hiccup, where you know teams have lost games like this be, because they haven't been in a lot of competitive games, because they have had the week off before. So a big, big telling game. Uh, for Arroyo on Friday. I think this is either this this could set the wheels in motion for another playoff run. We're gonna we're gonna last playoff. thing, last thing yeah, uh, we might as well mention we have Bishop Amont right here. Um, there's not a lot to say. They're playing St. John Bosco, one of the best teams in the country in the first round on, on Friday. Um, and hey look, 
the, the, there was a, I think it was four years ago. I, I forget the the year now when they had Tyler Vons and, and they had all of those three years ago. They had all of those guys, and, and I projected. I said, you know what, Bishop Vermont, this is going to be the big upset in the semifinals, and they got blown out. <laughs> if they got no, blown no, see, out, Jason probably used your video then that they night. got blown out. Then <laughs> I don't see any reason why they're gonna they're gonna do anything. Uh, they're thirty two point underdogs on max preps, which is just unreal. So um, it's, it's been a great season today. It, it would be the shocker of all shockers if Bishop Lamont won this game, or even if it was close in the end. One of the things I just took they took away from me watching the game with Shaman on Friday was the lack of true athleticism that was on the field. I yeah. mean, nothing against you know Crespi or Alamany or any other team. Sarah really, for that matter. Sarah for that matter, but. Chaminade just looked like they had so many athletes that were, and Lamont looked overwhelmed. And if that was the case against Chaminade, yeah. what could only imagine when it's going yeah, to be like the uh, like, like I said, and, and Chaminade is having one of those years that Bishop Lamont had that uh, you know that, that year when they took the Centennial to the semifinals mm -hmm. and came within a conversion of advancing the championship. Chaminade has that team this year. Yeah. Um, and I don't know when Almont's going to get that team again because they're not getting those kind of guys even at the lower levels. But let's playing. just stop. You know, we, can stop we can also mention, too, the future's pretty bright for Almont. Their freshman team, 8-2 and two this year, I believe. Their, J their junior varsity team won the Mission League this year. So the talent is going to be there. The question is, is it the, the game-changing talent you always talk about yeah. that get, gets them to the it's, glass it's, ceiling sort of well, thing? And, and what you learn, James... Listening to a lot of coaches, especially at Division One, you, you can't really look at hey, my freshman team was great, so therefore in two years, or my yeah. or my JV team was great, because the 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 great teams, the elite teams, they get those super players that transfer in James <laughs> that were great freshmen somewhere else yeah. that make the difference, and and that's what Amat. When is the last time Bishop Amat had a significant transfer in? Wow! Tell that's me, a good, that's a good question. Uh, they when when did they have the super stud quarterback? Even even look at St. Francis, what they did with Darius Prontes, getting a game changer like that. It's true. Um, when have they had something like that? Oh, you know, you know, a super running back come in, um, or a plethora of guys come in the way La Mirada did to win their championships. It doesn't happen over at Bishop Amat, and that's by design. I, I don't think that they really care for that to happen. That's why they they are where they are right now. So, folks, one of the reasons why Fred gets paid the big bucks is because he's got 14 games in his area Friday night for the first round of the playoffs. Like guys like Will and myself, we only have six or seven. We've talked about some of them. Give me another game off of that menu here that you're looking at. Like, hey, you know, we, there's a team in there that's got a super chance here to move on. Well, gosh, James, I have to go. You know, you put me on the spot. I'll, I have to I'll, go. I'll let you look throw, at that. I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you one. Diamond one. Ranch. You, you stole my thunder, two, buddy. Two, two, seven, three, Diamond Ranch. Ranch is my team. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and I haven't seen Diamond Ranch. I've just paid attention to them the way you're supposed to pay attention when you're a person in my position. <laughs> um, and, and, and I, you know, I, I, I feel that vibe on social media. I, I've seen what they've done. And, and James, I do think, I'll say it again, they're going to beat Palmdale on Friday. Okay. And then they're going to get the second seed and watch out for Diamond Ranch. Okay. And then you talked to Coach Eric Martinez. I did. And what a fantastic job <laughs> yeah. he's done uh, in his first year. Totally forgot his son is a freshman that's playing on the varsity team yeah. this year, but he likes to match up up front. He thinks that uh, both his offense and defensive lines have a, a distinct advantage up front on Friday, and I think that's that's one game that, you know, you, you kind of stole my thunder. I'm going to give an upset thought here to Los Altos. Yeah. Los Altos has played in a pretty, you know, they, they played Charter Oak. Their preseason schedule has been pretty, hasn't been tough, but it's been tough enough. And now they're playing a team in Moore Park that not the most... Not the one, one, one of the more talented teams that Moore Park has had in years. The, tr the road trip is going to be kind of a, a hindrance for them, but if they come to play, yeah. they've got a chance to win. I, yeah, I, 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 I don't like Los Altos' chances this year. I just think they're, they've played over their heads, and mm -hmm. I think that's a, a real credit to the, the coaching staff, sure. first-year coach. Uh, Hector Spathius. Yeah, uh, Hector Spathius. He's done an incredible job yep. over there. With a team that really lost so many players, I mean, he, he showed what a great coach he is. I just think at that at, at this level, talent wins out most of the time. I'm not sure they have that talent. Last game we'll throw out there, mm -hmm. James, is South Albany in Division 12. Sure. They're a 91 team. Uh, they'll be at home against El Dorado. Um, I, South Albany's a four seed, James. I mean, I don't know. I, I you know they had that. They've been weird. They had that game against Rosemead. They almost coughed up, but they had that game against Arroyo. 
where they nearly knocked him off. I mean, which, which team is going to show up? I do think they're capable in this division of making a run and, and getting to share in that semifinal later down the line. And if you look at those eight teams, again, we talk about attendance problems that TF has. Look at the eight teams. It goes all the way from Santa Maria all the way down south to freaking uh, El Dorado. Yeah. And, you know, it's just that's a lot of that's a lot of mileage in between you know between those eight schools in the division. Yeah. So what a week for it. Yeah, it's gonna, gonna be great. It's gonna be a great Thursday, week. Friday. It starts on Thursday. Like I said, South Hills and Nogales at home. South Hills is home and Nogales is at home against La Pointe. Uh we'll start it there and then we'll carry it into Friday and uh, you know. And we then, mention it for the past eleven weeks, we'll mention it again. Make sure you're following Fred and myself. We got a bunch of staffers are going to be at all these games on Friday night on, on our social media accounts, on Twitter, on Facebook. Fred will have the uh, the Friday recap. We're we're debating 50-50 on doing the Saturday morning quarterback, which probably means I'll be doing the Saturday morning quarterback on Saturday. But well, we should because there's so many teams in the playoffs. Right? Yeah, we'll see. What and happens. we'll see what happens. But what if what if, this is the fun time of the year? Go to a game, folks. This is this. It, you know, there's no more my best, Fred. Yeah. You, you win, you move on. You lose, you go home. Right. You know, we'll see you all on Friday night. Thank you very much.